unfortunately, it ain't gonna work. I need to find the guy who messed with my controls on my gas bottle there. I don't have any gas. It's like trying to lasso a uh, flipper with uh, uh, some uh, spaghetti noodles. Hello everyone, welcome back to Maverick Mods. Just about got the suspension on the Firebird pretty well done. One last item to finish up, so grab the popcorn, let's get started. Last link in the puzzle for the rear suspension is the rear anti-roll bar, anti-sway bar, sway bar. Everybody has a different name for them. Just for brevity's sake, I'm going to call it a sway bar. Here is the sway bar that came on the Z28 rear end. Now, the original Firebird did not have one, but this one did, and unfortunately, it ain't going to work because the additional brackets that I added to the rear end housing are going to interfere with it, plus the end link portions of the bar interfere with the frame rails on the Firebird here. All is not lost. My original plan was to build my own sway bar and mount it to the chassis up here. I've kind of had a change of uh, heart, change of thought on that for various reasons. Um, putting the bar here, it's questionable whether it's more or less effective as a anti-roll bar, depending on where your end links are. However, I think I might be able to make this bar work with essentially the same modifications that I was going to have to do if I made my own bar completely from scratch. What I need to do initially is I need to cut this bar right along here so that I can get it mounted up. And once I do that, then I can kind of show you what my thinking is. All right, let me get the last of this after modifying this bar a little bit. Let me get it mounted up here. Get it lined up. Pretty good. Right, let me get this side lined up, then I'll show you where my thinking is. Obviously, I modified the sway bar just a little bit. At this point, it's dead weight. Uh, there is no, it, it serves no functional purpose until I add some arms to it. And here's my thought this bar is. Well, it's basically 4340. It's spring steel. There's nothing special about it. So what I got here is a piece of 4340 quarter inch rectangular bar. So my thought is that I take this bar, obviously I need to drill a hole in it so that it slides over the end of the sway bar. And I take and I just measure and I run my link, or I should say I run my arm out to about here somewhere thereabouts so that essentially at right height it comes out and it mounts right here I might need to do a little bit more thought into that because I've also got to factor in the suspension articulation because uh, I mean obviously that's going to cause a bind in there so got to do a little bit more thinking and engineering on that but here's my thought on this bar functionally there's no difference if it's got my uh, bar here as an arm versus the original bent uh, portion of the bar before. So let me scratch my head on that for a while, do some engineering and thinking about where to put the link so that I get articulation and I don't get any suspension binding and I'll be back. With my bar situated, centered, so I'm probably going to wind up trimming the ends just a little bit more to give myself a little bit more clearance after I fabricate my arm. I went and picked up some links that look like they'll work. So the idea here is that my bar is going to come forward to about right here, some of thereabouts. My link is going to wind up going right there. And then I'll just center my bar with my link. Everything should work out. Got all my parts and pieces made. Clean up my workbench here. So the long and short of it is, 
I've got my bar cut. I've got my arms made. And these are just made out of 4340. It's the same steel as the bar. Got my three-quarter hole drilled for the uh, to insert the bar, plus a chamfer on the edge so that I can get some meat when I weld this. Just a hole for the link. The links, nearest I could find that would fit, actually come off of a, I think it's a 2012 Jeep uh, Wrangler, I believe. So the idea here is, I'm going to go ahead and kind of pre-assemble my links. All right, so that should be the link for the driver's side. Make sure I get everything set right. Yeah, right, and there's the link for the... Did I do that right? I did. Oh, All right, let's move back over to the car. So I've got my bar, oh, actually, I'm gonna swing that up a little bit. So I've got my bar pretty much in position. There we go. I'll have to use my screwdriver just to slide it over a little bit. Hopefully that's enough so I can get this up in here. Just barely, all right. Okay, let me slide the other side over. Easier said than done. There we go. Let me get the other side in. Okay. There we go. All right, let me center my bar. This is not terribly critical at this point because I'm going to wind up a little bit too much. I'm going to wind up probably grinding the end of this bar down just a little bit when I get everything centered. That's pretty good. Okay, let's take a look at what I'm doing here. I've got my bar positioned because this thing actually, like I said, because there's no ends on it now, you can rotate this wherever you want. So I've got my bar positioned to just about where it needs to be so that I can access that bottom bolt on the diff cover if necessary. And ground clearance, not a problem. So the idea is that I'm going to position my ends here so that, uh, remember I'm sitting at ride height, and I'm going to get that bar basically, or get the arm parallel and then just set my link right up there on the frame rail. And I'll just uh, put a tab in there with a weld in a nut. That way I can screw a bolt right into it. So what I need to do now is go ahead, mark that, and drill my hole so that I can hold that in position. So if you can see right there, I've got my hole. There's actually a hole already there. But I just enlarged it a little bit, that hole right there. And take my bolt and a nut on the back side. And this will go up in here. And what I'm doing is just checking clearances, make sure I'm not binding on anything. All right. And that will allow me to set the position of my bar here. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and fab up my little eighth inch plate, just a little bit to kind of reinforce this section right here. And it'll give me something that I can weld my nut to. So when I've made up my doubler plate and I welded my nut to it so that I could kind of get it flush on the back here. And so I've got it just, it's just a, a half inch grade eight nut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just, by hand, screw that onto my link bar, my link. I'm gonna slide it up here. The part of the bolt that's protruding 
went ahead and slotted that into the hole I drilled. Now, let's just kind of move, since this is a, actually a, a little ball joint, I can kind of move that wherever I need to to get this to fit. Now I'm going to grab some clamps. I'll clamp my uh, doubler plate in place, weld that, and then I can finish up welding my arm to my bar. That's pretty good. Now, I'm going to put a clamp on the top. There we go. All right. Pretty good. Well, another example of no room for me, the welder, and the camera, but I've got my doubler plate uh, secured with rosette welds. When I come back and uh, do the final welding, I'll probably just uh, do a perimeter weld on that and clean those welds up a little bit, but that pretty much gives you an idea of what's going on here. So let me get the other side done and move on to the next step. I went ahead and pulled the sway bar out of the car. I tacked both arms to the bar before pulling it out, but I went ahead and put it on my table so I could make sure everything was flat. It was, and everything is level, even, 90 degrees. Basically, it's set. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the TIG welder even though I'm still not 100% certain of my TIG welding skills, they're going to have to do on this because everything I've read about welding 4340, a lot of the talk is about preheating the material before you start welding. Most of that has to do with MIG welding because when you're MIG welding, basically you're adding the filler material as soon as you apply the arc to it. So Essentially, if the material is cold, you can get cracking and things like that. What I'm hoping on the TIG is that I can go ahead and strike my arc and heat it with the TIG, bring it up to a good temperature before I start adding the filler on. Am I overthinking this? I don't know, time will tell. I just want to make sure I get a good weld on this so that it doesn't wind up cracking and separating while it's in the car. So let me get this all set up and get my TIG set up and let me give it a try. Okay, I need to find the guy who messed with my controls on my gas bottle there. I didn't have any gas. And I need to fix my tip. I'll be right back. Round two, let's try this with some actual gas. Let's see if it works better. Sway bar final update. I've got both my doubler plates installed with rosette welds. Again, I'll do a perimeter weld on these when I get everything blown back apart. Ran my uh, brackets, just do the sandblaster just to clean them up a little bit. And got my bar welded, ends welded, ground down, trimmed off on both ends. We're ready for installation. So go ahead and get my links in first. I said I'm not entirely certain whether this is the smart way to do it, but that's what I'm gonna do. What just happened? Oh, that's what happened, okay. Alright, so that one started, that one started. Let me get a wrench on those, get a couple of turns on. Alright, so those are started. Now let's get our brackets mounted up. Now we're not going to tighten these, but I'm going to bring them close. Now, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten my links up at the frame, and that'll basically help center the bar. I just remembered I have a battery-powered ratchet. Completely forgot about that. Okay. 
Now we'll hit it with the wrench. Yeah, that's centered. Okay, we can tighten these up. I'm gonna call this a success. So, of course, here's my old bar. It's in good position. Got it welded new, new arms on. My links to the frame. Same on both sides. Okay. Now, when compared to the original configuration of this bar, my arms are a little bit shorter and the actual attach point or the width i guess you could call it to the frame is a little bit shorter also that's just the limitations of what i've got with the firebird frame in theory you want this bar to be as wide as possible because the closer it is to the center line of the car both arms the more force that's required to prevent the rear end from uh uh, I should say to prevent the body from swaying. That's the whole point of the anti-roll bar or the anti-sway bar or the sway bar. However, even though I did shorten the bar a little bit, my arms are also shorter. So did I gain or lose any effectiveness of the bar? Who knows? I mean, I could probably run an engineering calculation on that, but frankly... I'm not that interested in it. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, I can always go to a bigger bar. Of course, this is a factory bar. I'd have to get aftermarket and then cut it up. But that's an option. So we'll see how this works. That's going to wrap it up for this week, guys. All the suspension components are finished. We can move on to other things now. Certainly appreciate everybody watching. Big thanks to all you guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. It certainly does help me out. Everybody, have a great day.